Okay then gang, so now we have a couple of simple providers providing us with some values and now we need to consume them in some widgets within the application. So what we want to do is consume the products data inside the home screen so we can list them out in the grid. But before we consume the state anywhere, we first of all have to make a small edit to the main.dart file. And that edit is to wrap the entire application with a provider scope. And what a provider scope does is outline the scope in which the providers can be used within the application. So that means if we wrap the entire application with a provider scope, then any widget in the application can consume the provider data. But if we just wrapped a subtree in the application with the provider scope, then only widgets within that subtree could consume the provider state. So let's do this. So what I'm going to do is select my app. I'm going to come to the context menu and I'm going to say wrap with widgets. And this is going to be the provider scope widget. And I'm going to click on this to import it. And we get a blue squiggly line, and that's because this whole thing can be a const. So we can take it from here, so cut that, and paste it over here as well, like so. Make sure this file gets imported, Flutter Riverpod. We need that to use provider scope. So now we're saying that basically any widget inside the entire application, inside this widget tree, my app, which is the root widget, that has access to, or rather they have access to the providers. Okay, so now we can head to the home screen and we can access the provider state inside here. Now, when we do this, we say that the widget that accesses the state is consuming the state, right? In other words, the widget is a consumer widget. Now, the Riverpod package comes fully baked with a special kind of widget class called consumer widget. And we'd use this class when we have a stateless widget that wants to consume some provider states. And all we do is replace the stateless widget class that we extend right here with that consumer widget class instead. So let's do that and make sure we import the Riverpod package too because that's where this consumer widget class comes from. Now this consumer widget is only intended to be used for stateless widgets like this is. If you have a stateful widget which needs to consume provider state, then you need to use a different class called consumer stateful widget. But we'll see that in the next lesson. Anyway, now our home screen extends this special consumer widget, which essentially adds functionality to the widget for us. And it gives us the ability to communicate with a provider. The way it does that is by giving us access to a second argument inside the build method right here of type widget ref. And we're just going to call the argument ref. And through this ref object, we can use different methods to do things like read provider data, watch provider data for changes and get the updated data whenever it does change, refresh the provider state, etc. Now, typically you'll probably be using either the read or watch methods to access the state from a provider. Nearly all the time I use the watch method, which can read the data once for us and then watches for changes. If the data ever gets changed, then it would force the build method to rerun and get that updated value for us. So let's give this a whirl. So then inside this build function, what I'm going to do is create a final value called all products. And I'm going to set that equal to the ref and then use the watch method on this. And then all we have to do is pass in a provider that we want to watch. So we've got two to pick from right here. We're going to watch this one products provider. So let's go over here and say products provider. We'll click on this and it imports this file for us. That's important. Okay, so we have now these all products, right? So when we use this watch method, like I said, it grabs the state returned from this provider, which is all products initially. And then if that was to ever change in the future, then we would get an updated value here and it would force the build method also to rerun. So we're updating the UI as well with that new data if we use it in the UI. Okay, so now we have all products. We can use those down here to actually output the products. Now, the first thing I want to do is instead of saying the item count is eight, I want to get the the, uh, the length of this list. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it in right here and then use the length property. So now we're outputting as many grid items as there are inside this list. And then down here inside the item builder, we want to basically output a bunch of stuff for each product. So to do that, what I'm going to do is add a child to this container, which is going to be a column. And inside this column, 
we're going to have a children property. So let's do that. Children, which is a list of widgets. Inside this list, the first thing I want for each product is an image. So I'm going to say image.asset and then we need a path to that image. Now, how do we get that? We know it's on all products, right? Um, rather, it's on each product as an image property. And we have the all products list. So what we could do is say all products, and then we can use the index that we get access to inside the builder. Where is that? Right here. And then we can use the image property on that. So dot image. And that gets us the path to the image. So it's going to show that image. I also want to give this a width and height. So width is going to be 60 and height is going to be 60 as well. Now, after the image, I want to output the product title. So I'll use a text widget for that. Inside here, we'll say all products. And again, use the index. And by the way, the index comes from the builder because when we use an item builder, we basically cycle through something like the product, right? And for each time we cycle through, the index goes up by one. So initially it's going to be zero. We get the first one, then it's one, then it's two. So we're outputting this for each product, right? Okay, so then we want the title property right here. And then finally, I want to output the price. So another text widget inside here, we're going to output, first of all, a pound sign. Then I want to output a variable. So I'm going to use dollar sign curly braces to output that variable. It's all products. And then we want the index again. And then on that, we want the price property. Okay, so let's save this and see if this works okay so it says no provider scope found what i'm going to do is hit hard refresh over here because we did provide the provider scope inside the main file yep and now it works now we can see all of those output to the screen which is awesome all right there's a little bit of space at the bottom of each one of these grid items and that's fine because we're going to add a little button later to add each item to the cart but now we've seen how to consume a provider inside a stateless widget and all we do is we extend consumer widget instead of stateless widget that allows us to access the ref as a second argument inside the build method and we use that ref to watch the products provider right here to get those products and then we can output them in the widget tree okay